What's happening everyone, Nick here from TV Box Stop with another new and exciting projector review. Today's projector is from one of my favorites who delivered one of the very first models to feature auto lens focusing called the PJ20 and has been my reference model for almost two years. So this is the Nexigo PJ40 HD 1080p and it delivers a brighter display with an emphasis on fan noise and compatibility with streaming devices. So, wanna see if it's better than the PJ20 model? Stick around, my full review begins right after this brief intro. Welcome back. The PJ20 has a native resolution of 1920 by 1080p. It has a brightness of 700 ANSI lumens, which is the brightest of all their models. It has an aspect ratio of 4 to 3 and 16 to 9. Its display size ranges from 50 inches all the way up to 300 inches. Its light source is LED and its display is LCD. It has a manual focus adjustment lever digital auto vertical keystone correction and manual digital horizontal keystone correction. It uses 160 watts of power. It claims to have a 4K local video playback, dual band Wi-Fi 6 AX compatibility, Bluetooth 5.1 technology, and it has dual 20 watt internal speakers. So in this package contains the PJ40 model itself, one infrared remote control, a pair of AAA batteries, one AC power cable, one auxiliary cable, a spare dust filter, a lint-free cleaning cloth, and your user manual. So this model falls within the full size projector category with a dimension of 11.3 inches wide by 10.7 inches long by 4.8 inches tall. At the front, you have a glossy surface with a front facing IR sensor, the Nexigo branding and a 3 inches glass coated projector lens. To its left, it has a removable dust filter and its left internal speaker. To its right is where you'll find its exhaust vent and its right internal speaker. For IO ports, it has two input HDMI ports, two USB 2.0 ports, one Ethernet LAN port, a headphone jack, one auxiliary port, a rear facing IR sensor, its AC power socket and the intake vent for the internal cooling fan. At the top, you have a manual press button controls and a sliding cover to gain access to its focus adjustment lever and also to protect it from dust and unintentional adjustments. And to its base, it has four screw type anti skid rubber feet that you can unscrew to gain access to its ceiling mountain screw holes and it has a screw type kickstand. I like that they made this change to screw type legs instead of having to remove the sticky rubber feet. So here I have it set up on a projector stand at 8 feet 2.4 meters on this 76 inch DIY projector screen. The screen is covered with an inexpensive anti-light high contrast 1.1 reflective gain projector fabric which anyone can purchase cheaply on AliExpress for only $12 and on Amazon for around $53. It comes in various sizes from as small as 30 inches all the way up to 300 inches and with this fabric, it enhances any projector display by over 50% in daylight as well as in welded rooms. So if in this video you find that the display quality is double that of what you are getting on your conventional matte fabric or cloth type projector screen, then it's due to the projector fabric I am using. So if you would like to get your hands on one of these, I placed a link in the description where you can find the exact type I am using. And I appreciate you using my links so that I earn a commission on your purchase, so see the link in the description. So the boot up includes a simple Nexigo splash screen followed by an Android boot up animation. So we see here that is running on Android followed by its main menu. The entire process takes 25 seconds. 
So before I proceed with the rest of this video, I would like to point out that the display of this projector out of the box is outstanding. It has very bright lumens, extremely sharp edges and evenly distributed focus. In comparison to their previous model, this purchase is definitely an upgrade. So the claim of having 700 ANSI lumens compared to 500 in their previous PJ20 model is definitely noticeable in this model. So this is the main menu and it consists of a shortcut to access its source inputs. It has a file manager for browsing media on external storage. This section called more is where you can access its Bluetooth settings and you also have DLNA mobile file sharing. It comes with an office suite for reading office documents. You get Miracast mobile screen mirroring, iOS cast for AirPlay mirroring and iOS cable cast. And you have the settings area. In the settings area, you have Wi-Fi settings where you can connect to dual band Wi-Fi 6 networks along with standard Wi-Fi AC networks. You have Bluetooth settings for connecting to Bluetooth controllers and audio devices. You have picture mode settings where you can select from presets or you can set your own custom brightness and color settings. But please note, if you adjust its color and brightness from within the settings area, you will not see any color change. You have to open an image or a video and either press the menu button or select the on-screen settings to bring up the picture settings. And here you will see changes when you make adjustments. An interesting new feature never seen before in other models is a fan speed adjustment. When set to the lowest level, there is absolutely no noise from the fan even though it is rotating. The lower the fan speed, it automatically reduces the lumens to avoid overheating and at the same time it maintains a decent picture quality. So that's one premium feature not found in their PJ20 model and I'll do a fan noise test in just a moment. Under projection is where you can change its projection direction. You can turn on auto keystone correction, but keep in mind it only makes auto adjustments to the vertical keystone. If you turn it off, you can adjust its 4D corner keystone correction, its horizontal keystone correction and vertical keystone corrections manually. You have zoom adjustment. You can change its aspect ratio under the display scale option. And you can reset to factory default settings. Under update, you can perform wireless updates and you can also update its firmware via USB. Here it shows that it has one update pending, so I'll complete that update and continue. Under system settings, you can change its language, time zone, virtual on-screen keyboard, a feature called electricity boot. You have the option to boot directly into a source input. You can enable keypad sounds and you have CEC options. A new feature after the update is HDMI EDID, which is very useful when connecting your projector to extend the display, let's say for example your PC as a second or third display. It will automatically allow your PC to configure the right resolution and aspect ratio for the projector. Under About, you have its firmware information and its MAC address. You also have another option to restore to factory default. 
So the PJ40 comes with an infrared remote that works really well, but it still needs a line of sight and it does not have an air mouse cursor feature. With its Android operating system, it allows you to connect to an alternative wireless air mouse via USB dongle or you can connect via Bluetooth. So here I connected one of my wireless air mouse via a USB dongle and it controls all its basic functions such as volume controls. Its direction pad navigates the menu along with the OK button and you have air mouse function along with its back and home buttons. Playing media via external storage according to their product description claims that it's capable of playing 4K videos as well as 1080p videos internally. To test this feature, I will play a 4K HDR HLG video and one AV1 video to see which formats it can decode. I will also play videos encoded with surround sound audio such as Dolby Atmos and DTS audio. The product description does not claim that it can play surround sound audio formats, but it's standard during my testing. This is a 4K HDR HLG video and it has no issues playing this format. This is a 4K AV1 video and it produces audio only with no video, so it does not have the AV1 decoder. And this is a Dolby Atmos video and it cannot play this format. The same goes for DTS audio. Another feature posted on their product page is full compatibility with devices such as the Google Chromecast and Amazon Fire TV Cube connected to any of its HDMI ports. So here it confirms that when I connect the Google Chromecast, you can play movies in HD 1080p with audio. The Chromecast has HDCP 2.3 protection and the Amazon Fire TV Cube has HDCP 2.2 protection. Both devices are compatible delivering video with audio, unlike other models that produces video only with no audio due to lack of DRM requirements. In early July, the flower meadows of Europe receive more sunlight than at any other time of the year. And that makes it a very busy time the honeybees. The HDMI CC option works perfectly when connected to official devices to its HDMI ports. If you turn off the power on a device such as the Chromecast, the projector will simultaneously turn off. And from an off position, if you turn on the Chromecast, it will automatically turn on the projector. When it comes to projectors, mobile screen mirroring is paramount for both Android and iOS devices. Connecting your mobile device is as easy as opening your preferred option on the main menu. Mirrorcast for Android devices and iOScast for Apple devices. If your mobile phone is Android like the one I have here, simply open your Mirrorcast app, search for the PJ40 from the list of scanned available devices and select it to begin casting your mobile phone. Unfortunately, the projector does not have built-in Chromecast, so the official Chromecast feature in apps such as YouTube and Netflix cannot be used. For playing images in a loop that comes in handy at many functions such as parties, weddings, funerals, family gatherings, office presentations and so much more, it comes with the standard image player for displaying single images or playing multiple images in a loop. However, the developer of the firmware forgot to include a transition feature for the player so you get this picture loading progress bar between images. So to test its optimal display and audio in a dark environment as well as in a well-lit one, I will fine-tune its focus adjustment and display settings, connect an Android TV box to one of its HDMI ports and play a 4K AB1 high quality video.
So again, I reiterate that the display quality of this PJ40 model is their best ever with really high crystal clear quality with sharp edges and its internal speakers are powerful with medium bass level enough to fill a small to medium sized room. If you like to enjoy gaming on a large projector displays, then the PJ40 will not disappoint. Take a look at the display quality during gaming. Also, it's connected to my gaming PC and I'm not experiencing any latency which could negatively affect my gameplay. Contact. So if you are into a full audio experience, then you have the option to connect to Bluetooth speakers, headphones and AV receivers using its Bluetooth 5.1 feature. There are two Bluetooth modes with this projector. You can use it as a Bluetooth speaker itself and you can connect to Bluetooth speakers and receivers. To use it as a Bluetooth speaker, from the main menu open the more section and there you will see the Bluetooth option. Once you open the Bluetooth feature, it will immediately begin transmitting its Bluetooth signal. Then you can simply scan with your mobile device to use it as a Bluetooth speaker. To connect to Bluetooth devices, enter the settings area and open the Bluetooth settings. Turn on the Bluetooth feature. Then put your Bluetooth speaker or receiver into pairing mode and scan for your Bluetooth device and connect to it from the list of detected devices. And finally, in testing its fan noise from a distance of 1 meter at various levels, at its lowest speed the noise drops below the room's natural noise level, which is around 36 decibels, and at its highest speed it measures 47 decibels. In summary, I've already said it twice during this video and I'll say it again, that the display and brightness of this latest model are indeed better than their previous PJ20 model. My only regret is that they did not implement the motorized autofocus adjustment. I'm satisfied that it's compatible with devices such as the Google Chromecast and Amazon Fire TV devices and it can play Netflix in HD with audio. Its adjustable fan speed is one of a kind, allowing it to be the quietest projector I've ever encountered. And finally, I like that its Bluetooth feature allows you to use Bluetooth wireless air mouse and Bluetooth speakers, but that does not take away from the fact that its dual internal speaker system is also impressive. So that brings me to the end of this review. If you are considering purchasing this projector, I highly recommend it as you won't be disappointed by its premium build and display quality. To be taken directly to its Amazon product page, I placed a link in the description where you can find it easily at an affordable price along with a $30 coupon. This link is also my affiliate link and when you use it to purchase, I also earn a commission that goes towards the upkeep of this channel and acquiring new and exciting products for review, so thanks in advance for using my link. I would also like to remind you to check out the high contrast anti-light projector fabric used in this video, a link to which I also placed in the description below. And in closing, give this video the thumbs up to support the work that I do on my channel. If this is your first time viewing one of my videos, then I urge you to click that subscribe button and give me a ring on that notifications bell to be notified when I release a new video or decide to do a giveaway. So thanks for taking the time to watch this video, stay connected and see you in the next one.